This society is so goddamn broken, and it's all because of the fiat money. And, you know, I do believe there's a God, and I do believe he's going to come down and wreak vengeance on all these fiat assholes. I mean, he's going to, he's going to make this fiat money worthless. And, you know, then the rest of us, the remnant of this country, the people who are the workers and the honest folks, are going to, we're going to rise back up, and we're going to start transacting with each other and adding value, and we're going to use an honest currency to do it. And the most logical, honest currency with which to do it is Bitcoin. And that's what's going to happen. My first thing to advice to anybody is if you're not involved with Bitcoin, you got to get involved with Bitcoin. you got to go to Bitcoin meetups. you got to talk to Bitcoin people because we all get it. In an interview with podcaster Walker, Larry Leppard predicted a rapid acceptance of Bitcoin and a potential reset of the financial system. He critiqued the flaws of the current fiat currency system, emphasized the importance of sound money, and suggested that Bitcoin could eventually overtake other currencies. Leopard pointed to El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin as a significant milestone, with more powerful nations now showing increased interest. He noted that Nashville felt like a turning point and highlighted the approval of Bitcoin ETFs, arguing that this disproves claims that the government would destroy Bitcoin. Leopard also discussed the math behind U.S. debt, interest rates, and deficits, predicting a collapse that could lead to a financial reset, with Bitcoin becoming a reliable form of money. While gold is often seen as a stable form of money, Leopard believes Bitcoin is superior. Despite a decline in ETF purchases, gold prices remain stable due to nations trading in their currencies and settling in gold. He anticipates a reset between 2028 and 2035, with Bitcoin emerging as a dominant currency. For more insights, watch clips from Lawrence Leopard's conversation with Walker. Before we continue with the rest of the video do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. We're on the cusp of that really rapid adoption, in my opinion. You know, kind of the Malcolm Gladwell curve where a 10, you get to a 10% inflection point and then boom, everybody knows that you need it. I mean... That's what Nashville felt like to me. I mean, a couple of years before, we were all down there, you know, cheering on, you know, Jack as he had orange pilled Bukele and, you know, El Salvador was going to go on the Bitcoin standard. And that was fabulous. We had a nation state. I mean, you know, now we've got the biggest nation state talking about it. You got Lummis introducing a bill, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you got Jason Lowry being cited in RFK's speech. I mean, the strategic importance of it. So, you know, you've got the ETFs. I mean, since, you know, you and I have last done a podcast, I mean, the ETFs have been approved. I mean, as Sailor pointed out, you know, one, and, and I know this was to be true with me too. When I would try and orange pill wealthy friends, their response, even if, if I could get them to accept the, the premise that it was a good thing, their response was, yeah, but the government's going to kill it. Well, the government just approved an ETF. You know? So, um, you know, that, that argument's kind of off the table. Now, now, look, when it gets to be existential and they realize the dollar is failing, you know, and particularly if Kamala wins and, and you know, and Warren is, is her Treasury Secretary, um, you know, maybe we've got a 6102 risk. But, um, you know, for now, anyway, the government is, uh, in my view, being pretty friendly towards it. So let's just talk about kind of the math here. I mean, so as we all know, when they run a deficit, they have to pay for it. To pay for it, they have to issue debt. And somebody's got to buy that debt. You got to find a sucker at the card table, as Groman says. And so, um, because, and in the past, you know, it was, well, it was a petrodollar, and originally the Saudis and all those guys would recycle the debt. And then it became China, you know, when we let them into the WTO in exchange for them buying the debt. But all those guys aren't buying the debt anymore. And so, um, you know, what happens is we're having a hard time finding buyers for the debt. And what that means is that intrinsically interest rates go up. And if, if interest rates go up, then that makes the deficit larger. And the deficit being larger means you've got to sell more debt. But selling more debt makes the interest rates go up more. So you, you can kind of see where I'm going here. It's rinse, wash, repeat until the whole damn thing blows up. This society is so goddamn broken. And it's all because of the fiat money. And, you know, I do believe there's a God. And I do believe he's going to come down and wreak vengeance on all these fiat assholes. I mean... He's going he's gonna to make this fiat money worthless. And, you know, then the rest of us, the remnant of this country, the people who are the workers and the honest folks, are gonna, we're going to rise back up and we're going to start transacting with each other and adding value. And we're going to use an honest currency to do it. 
And the most logical, honest currency with which to do it is Bitcoin. My prediction today is that this is all going to get sorted out between 2028 and 2035. Nobody in the world is really running a sound money stance. That really doesn't matter. Um, what, what matters is the dollar cross to gold and the dollar cross to Bitcoin. I mean, that, and those are the two clues that tell you, you know, I mean, if Bitcoin's at half a million dollars a coin and gold's at $10,000 an ounce, well, guess what? You know the dollar is failing on an, on an absolute basis. So and let's, let's kind of touch there into another area that I think is relevant, which is we're seeing, and this is big to me, in the United States, I mean, and you have to remember, we all believe Bitcoin's a solution, and it is. It's much better than gold. But, you know, I mean, most people aren't where we are. Most, and most people, you know, in governments who are thinking, okay, we got to do a reset or we got to go back to sound money, the first thing that comes to their mind is gold. I mean, a perfect example this is a really nice lady, and she's very smart, named Judy Shelton, who was nominated for the Fed. She's a sound money person. And if we're going to do a reset, it would be a reset to gold. And what you're seeing out there right now is you're kind of seeing that happen subtly but consistently and and what i mean is what i mean to say is that um everything you know all trade used to be in dollars and and it but you're seeing now countries trading with each other in their own currencies and then net settling in gold and that's why the gold what's very interesting to me is that the gold price has been very strong um in spite of the fact that gold etf uh purchasing has gone down i mean you know, the, B, the, the Bitcoin ETFs have eaten gold's lunch, right? Bitcoin ETFs have gone from nothing to being substantial in size. Gold ETFs have been shrinking the whole time. Okay, you look at that and you would think to yourself, well, the price of gold should be going down, but it's not. I mean, yesterday the price of gold traded at a new all-time interday high, you know, 2458 or something. But, and, and the reason for that is that other countries are using gold, they are using gold as their neutral reserve asset. They realize that having the dollar as a neutral reserve asset is a losing proposition. In other words, they're citing micro strategy success. Lawrence Leppard explores the winning strategy of acquiring Bitcoin while generating fiat cash. While he believes the EU is unlikely to adopt this approach, he expects other nations will. Leppard strongly emphasizes the importance of understanding the underlying issues and choosing to move away from the current system favored by the elite. He highlights the divide between the 99% and the 1% who control the monetary system stressing that this is not a partisan issue. Regular people, including pensioners, have been harmed by Federal Reserve policies like interest rate manipulation. Leppard argues that creating a stable monetary system and regaining control is achievable with Bitcoin. He remains optimistic, calling Bitcoin a source of hope and encouraging participation in the community to drive change. He predicts that future generations will view the current financial system with the same skepticism we now have toward outdated medical practices like bloodletting. Let's return to the interview for more insights from Lawrence Leppard. The real winning strategy, as Sailor points out, is a country that can issue fiat and buy Bitcoin. I mean, good God, what a deal. You know, I mean, it's... What a trade. I mean, Taylor right? is yeah. really just doing the Hugo Stinnis strategy of, you know, he's, he's issuing claims and something that he knows isn't going to go down in value, and he's buying the thing that he knows is going to go up in value. I mean, it's, it's just like a turn-the-crank kind of money machine, which is why MicroStrategy is such a fabulous stock. You know, my fund owns it and I own it personally and, and so on and so forth. I mean, it really is brilliant. So I would imagine that other countries, other smart countries will pick up on it. But, you know, the whole EU, I mean, no, they're all stupid as shit. I mean, they're not going to get it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, you don't, I don't think you're going to see anybody there pick up on it anytime soon. Speaking to Jeff, you know, Booth, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, he just said, he said, Larry, you know, if we could get everybody to use Bitcoin, this thing would collapse instantly. And he's right. But, you know, we're a long way from that point, right? So, so the book is my contribution to trying to get everyone to understand what's going on and then to be pissed off and then to choose to opt out of the system like you and I have and to fight for a fair system. So that's, that's you know, that's going to be the message. It's like, it's, it's my team against your team, you know, my uh, color we'll against your color. That's, it, that's all a distraction game. Absolutely. That's a complete... <laughs> Hegelian dialect where they're just trying to get you to fight with each other so you don't focus on them. Yeah. No, I'll tell you who it's, it is. It's the 99% against the 1%, <laughs> right? I mean, that's really the issue. I mean, we got we to grab the power back that we should rightly have, which is to have a sound monetary system. And that got stolen from us in 1913 when the Federal Reserve was created. That's what we've got to do. And so, you know, it's not red, blue. It's, it's, it's all of us against the elites who are running a system where the game board is tilted in their favor heavily. That's the problem. You know, I mean, 
It's, it's, it's just, it's so clear. Our grandkids are going to look back at this like, you know, like we look back at bloodletting, right? I mean, you know, they were, they were draining blood to, to, to help people medically, you know, in the middle ages. And I mean, it was, it was barbaric and it was absurd. And our, our kids, you know, grandkids will look back at this and, and they'll have the same reaction. Hang on a second. Everyone knows free markets are what provide prosperity. And you let the mon- the market for money, you let that by, be set by 12 guys who could rig it in their favor. What, what the f- were you doing that it was insane i mean you know in my lifetime i mean you know we've had zero percent interest rates we've had 20 percent interest rates the 20 percent interest rates almost bankrupted my father's business i mean really close it was very stressful in our family at that time i remember it very well and then we've had zero percent interest rates which totally hammered all the savers i mean so you know i mean and i i know people like this i mean my in-laws fall in this bucket you know you save your entire life You've got some number, I don't know, it's 200,000 or a million, whatever it is, your life savings, you know, you're retired and you put it, you know, you used to be able to, before ZERP, you used to be able to put it in a bank CD and earn five or 6%. And that helped supplement your social security. And if you live frugally and your house was paid for, you know, you're okay. Well, when ZERP came along, all those people, their income went to zero. Their, their interest income went to zero. Did the Federal Reserve care? No, they didn't give a shit. You know, they wanted to save Wall Street and they wanted to get the economy going again and tough shit. All you, all you retired people who are saving money, well, f*** you. We're not going to let you have any interest income. I mean, what the f***? You know, the cap, I mean, 0% interest rates is a tautology. I mean, if you're saying money won't pay any interest, you're basically saying money has no value. What makes you hopeful? What, what, oh, I'm what, incredibly you know. hopeful. Yeah, well, what makes me hopeful? So Bitcoin is the biggest source of hope in the world, first of all. And hanging out with Bitcoiners will get you hopeful no matter what. So... Um, my first thing to advice to anybody is if you're not involved with Bitcoin, you got to get involved with Bitcoin. You got to go to Bitcoin meetups. You got to talk to Bitcoin people because we all get it. Um, and I know that's a very self-serving comment, but it, it, you know, being involved in the Bitcoin community has changed my life. I mean, I'd be depressed if I didn't realize there's a way out. Um, you know, how fast the way out happens? Well, okay, as we said, this could be tough. You know, but but I'd rather be on the right side. Concerns about a potential U.S. recession have driven the prices of Ethereum and Bitcoin down to multi-month lows as of Monday. Just days earlier, optimism fueled by Donald Trump's speech had pushed Bitcoin above $70,000, but this recent decline marks a dramatic turnaround. Earlier this year, the cryptocurrency market saw a boost following the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's approval of exchange-traded funds tracking Ethereum and Bitcoin prices. However, fears of a U.S. recession and rising geopolitical tensions have led to declines in both global equities and cryptocurrency values. Since reaching a record high in March, Bitcoin has lost over a third of its value, with its reputation as a safe haven asset diminished by its increasing correlation with equities. Market analyst Tony Sycamore notes that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are high-risk investments and have fallen sharply. Ether dropped by up to 21% to its lowest level since January, while Bitcoin plunged 12% to $49,000 on track for its largest one-day decline since November 2022. Sycamore warns that further declines towards $48,000 could occur if Bitcoin fails to hold the $53,000 to $54,000 support level. U.S. equities tied to the cryptocurrency industry have also been hit hard, with shares of miners like CleanSpark, BitFarms, Riot Platforms, and Marathon Digital falling between 12% and 18% before Monday's opening. The sell-off underscores the growing connection between traditional markets and cryptocurrencies. As we wrap up, we'd like to hear your thoughts on this interview. When do you think Bitcoin will surpass fiat currencies? Please share your views in the comments below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.